Chispas. International word for sparkles and mobility water. What we're working on tonight is a couple of home remedies for shoulder discomfort. We've taken on the obvious ones. We've got distraction in the joint capsule. We've hit the rib. We've gotten into the pack. These are a couple of little small pieces. Why am I clutching a knife, a piece of PVC, and a tennis ball? I'll show you. First mobility wad piece tonight. I've got a Mashunga sword. You may not have one of these at home. You can get a, I swear to God, it's called a pocket pounder. It is a, uh, it's a pocket pounder. It's a lacrosse ball on a stick, basically, that you use to make lacrosse nets uh, set. You can use that too. They have those around. What I'm going to do is just take this knife and not cut myself again. I'm going to shove it into, make a cut here, and just make a little X with said knife. And then I'm going to go ahead, I haven't even tested this, it just came out. I'm going to go ahead and put this PVC pipe in there. Now what's got, I've got is I've got an effective way to create, kind of jam this in the corner and try to get this into my first rib. This first rib is really high up in the thorax here. We don't tend to think of it very high, but it basically it blocks elevation of my shoulder. We've been trying to capture that first rib and get moving, or the second rib and kind of drive it down by lifting our butt up and driving the thing in. But if we can get this first rib to drop as the arm elevates, it doesn't end up blocking the elevation of the arm. So check a look at this. This is pretty cool stuff. What I'm going to do is lay down the ground here. Again, this has never been tested in the history of the world. You've never seen lacrosse ball, PVC pipe, Bergner, I should call this the Bergner first rib mode. And what I'm going to do is just going to pop that into my, kind of the corner of my neck here. Obviously, if I black out, I'm on my carotid. Don't be there, okay? If it feels creepy, it's creepy. But in the meantime, if you just load that thing up a little bit, Try to take a big breath, you're going to find that that first rib is pretty stiff, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring my arm up, and as my arm comes up, I just hold this in with my other side, and I'm guiding that first rib oh, down, and you'll find that in this position, if you just go to elevate a little bit, right here, elevate, so over the head, elevate and drop, oh, and you're going to find that first rib, it feels like it's connected to your face, and your butt at the same time, and your liver and everything else, and that girl that broke up with you in 14, oh, the dance, it's connected to her too. We hate this, but this is a really potent way of restoring that motion in that first rib, which blocks elevation. And if you'll notice that I just did that a few times, but the difference in the quality of my movement is pretty radical because that first rib gets out of the way, and that improves my elevation and unloads a lot of the brachial plexus. That, all that uh, kind of cervical nerve root bundle runs out of underneath here, over the first rib, under the scalenes, gets potentially made a sandwich. But just by cleaning that up, you can really change the quality of your overhead position dramatically and that elevation dramatically. So being able to pull forward and up, it's a big clean up. All right, so that's homework number one. Um, I've done, you can do this with a Mashunga sword, but I'll tell you what, this is effective. If you don't leave it as long, it's not as awkward, but go ahead and cut it in half. We just have this line around, all right? That's homework number one. That's a big deal. Uh, number two, I've lost my lacrosse ball. All right, we'll go, we'll, we'll go to number two. Second piece we don't think of is this, this tricep tends to uh, get really short. It blocks this long-handed tricep, can really limit some of this overhead positioning, and cause a lot of grief. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I've got my barbell set up here. I'm going to go ahead and come across this thing and load up my, my, my triceps here, and then I'm just going to roll across. And just like we're doing with the, the rolling of the calf, I'm just going to find something ugly, load through my forearm, and then just pull across. So you're going to see that I look good, look good, oh, there's something tight there, and you see me clunk off, and I'm just going to roll back and forth. I can pull this way, that's fine, but you probably won't capture some of the ugliness. And up top, you're really going to capture some of that group nastiness of that triceps comes across and uh, that long head passes here, you're going to catch some of the, the shorter heads as they attach more to the arm. But find out and camp out in there and see if that doesn't make a difference in the quality of your rack and your overhead position. And uh, so it gets ropey here and sometimes it's difficult to fully access to those things. All right? So that's number number two. The crash ball over here. The crash ball rolls against the garage door every time. Homework number three. You. When you're living in the front of the shoulder here, the shoulder comes forward a lot. And if that shoulder is tight, we've been dealing with the capsule, get the shoulder in the back, restore the relationship of the shoulder to the scapula. 
but the anterior part of the delt here gets really short and it really does restrict some internal rotation problems and it gets ropey. Long head of the biceps is really here, then you're like, well, what if that's long head of the biceps? What's this? It's certainly not supraspinatus tendon. It ends up being the kind of these tendons of the long head, uh, or excuse me, of the anterior delt, medial delt. And so uh, corporal brachialis is in there, but uh, delt is right here. And so if you just get up on this thing, get up on this thing, and smash back and forth, you're going to find some really tender bits, especially bringing that arm up, and you can add some rotation to that. But if you just spend a second ungluing these tissues, you're going to be really surprised at how really ropey this stuff is, and how maybe this is a lot of the, res the kind of uh, responsible, uh, the mechanism of, of shoulder pain. So we've got three pieces tonight. I want you to get on the first rib, hang out on the overhead. Two is let's blast and open up your arms this way. Three, let's get into the delt head in this way. And four is I want you to try to go ahead and get on the subscap. Now the subscapularis is right inside here. It's part of that kind of rotator cuff piece. When your arm's up overhead, if you are so tight in the front of the shoulder that you can't bring the arm forward in the socket because it's held back, you're just going to impinge and cause problems. So if you can get in this thing, you can imagine I'm laying on the ground, and I'm going to roll back and forth. So what I want to do is go ahead and open up that arm the best that I can, and I've got my trussed lacrosse ball, and I'm just going to camp out and roll back and forth. Just opening up a little bit, and you're going to find some really nasty short bits in there, and that's going to surprise you. That's a piece of that rotator cuff. Remember, you've got a lot of nerves that run through this area. Don't let your arm go numb. Be cool. But go ahead and feel free to do some exploring in this tissue. Understand what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve the mechanics. It's not just rolling around for no good sake. The idea is to improve overhead position, improve pressing position, and you'll see that I mean, just even the little bit I did really does make a difference in terms of how this shoulder feels. All right? That's the home. Code word Zulu. You know who I'm talking to out there. This is for you. Uh, special shout out to Metric down in New Zealand. Go ahead and pop it off. Show everyone why it's been so steady tonight. Can you do it? I'm pull this try. off. Shing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pan this around. No, go ahead and pull it up. Pocket gymnast. We've got the handheld tripod cam. Amazing. Amazing. So that we don't uh, obscure, obstruct the microphone of said camera. And, you know, who knows where this is going to go. Maybe we can set it up so we can, we can film ourselves doing the MWOD up close, something like that. Anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Tasty information, huh?